fifth overall. And Mark Green, on fourth, sixth quickest in this Ford. He'll be the second quickest Ford behind Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s teammate, who is third right now. Actually, faster on his second lap. 30.573, not quick enough, though, to take Brian Scott off the top of the pylon. You know, you know what this is about, Hammond, get close to hunt season. I think, you know, in Virginia, they require you to have a, you know, a, a, a facial hair. A That's facial for hair warmth, to, right? Yeah, yeah. It's got to be for warmth, of course, as we see Paul Menard on the racetrack now, the read number 33. Paul Menard's fastest lap in practice yesterday was 30.619. Yeah, good enough for third place on that first lap. They're going to run two. See if he can pick it up. He's about, he's probably been the closest to his practice run from yesterday of anyone, at least on his first lap, 30.682 for Paul Menard. Let's see if he can pick it up on lap two. Very aggressive onto the apron. And slows down just a bit, 30.742 on lap two. So again, third quick for Paul Menard. Again to Hamlin in the number 18 car this this weekend. Yeah, Joe Gibbs has only brought one car for this race at Atlanta. Normally have the two, the 18 and the 20. Just have the one here with Denny in the Z-Line Designs, Camry. And what he did on that first lap, trying to carry that momentum through the center of the corner. A lot of the cup drivers, including Tony Stewart, when he qualified, uh, on Friday afternoon, he ran a high line through there. I think Denny was going to try and say, I'm going to run the bottom on lap number one, then I'm going to run the high side in one and two on lap number two and see how they compare. Pretty darn close right now. Pretty close for Denny Hamlin. Actually picked up on the second lap, and Denny's now third. Now he may go back and say, I wish I would have run the high side. I'm veteran from uh, Wisconsin. I say veteran. He's 32 years old, but we've seen him around Midwestern racing and around this nationwide series on and off the last uh, few years. We're going to make his fourth start of this season out of the five races that will be run. And one of several drivers that will be in the field for today who have never run at this particular racetrack. With this series now just running here once a year, uh, drivers that haven't competed here before, we see a number of them this weekend that are coming here for the very first time. And there is a lot to learn about running this racetrack. Yeah, they'll go away with a greater appreciation of what it takes to get around this racetrack. But they'll probably go away, some of them shaking their heads about just how <laughs> difficult it is also. You talk about banking, this racetrack's banking it's a little deceiving looking. It's only 14 degrees. Now you compare that to say Michigan, which is the track most similar to this when Roger Penske built this speedway in the late 1990s. It was sort of a copy of his track in Michigan, but not exact. It actually has four degrees less banking and the transition into the corner is also seemingly a difference to the drivers here versus Michigan. Yeah, and I've said a lot of years getting questions from fans, what was my favorite racetrack? And Michigan was at the top of the list. I just loved racing there. And when they built this track saying it was going to be like that, man, I was so excited to come out here. Got out here on the racetrack, and I said, well, it might look like it by some of the things that are around here, but it drives nothing like it whatsoever. It is so totally different. And it's those transitions into and out of the corners that, that make the and the lack of banking makes it totally different. And over the years, it's become a lot more difficult because of the bumps, it seems that the cracks get wider over time. The weather, uh, you know, makes these where they have to put tar into the seams. When the track was new and had, a, had new asphalt, it was fairly smooth and had a lot of grip. Character, though, makes for better racing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the difficulty doesn't come in that you're limited to one groove around here. You know, you basically. Here's Danny O'Quinn, Jr. 25 years old, trying to get in on time. Whoa, yikes. Used up all the racetrack off of two. These guys have a little bit different setup in their car, so they go after qualifying a little bit harder. They don't look to... They put a lot more emphasis yeah. on qualifying than they do the race because uh, typically don't run many laps when it comes to race time. But yeah, see, they qualified uh, pretty good. He locked himself in. He's he not, as, not as fast as teammate, Chase Miller, but uh, he's still in the race. Qualified second here at Nashville in 2006. He was the Nationwide Series Rookie of the Year that season. Somebody needs to tell him that that first lap was good enough. So he doesn't try to go out here and better it and crash this thing. 31.34 on that first lap. 
He's going to finish up that second lap, and it is even better, 31.23. Car looked good getting down in the corner. Logano says this is one of his favorite tracks, maybe not on this lap. He committed to that throttle full off of turn two. And the rear was hung yeah. out, but he was still in the throttle, so that was pretty good. Got one more lap, but it's not going to be quicker. Well, it's going to be an all Joe Gibbs racing front row but not the order you might have expected based on experience. She didn't love nothing, leave nothing on the table in that first lap, Phil. She definitely went for it. She had that big slide over there, and mm -hmm. she kept kept her foot in it. Obviously, look at this tracker now, running about a tenth of a second bat better than Mike Harmon's lap. Let's see if she can get through three and four this time. Looks like pretty how, good this how time. How exciting would it be to be able to be on a provisional pole, at least for a short period of time, Hometown girl here. She's going to, I'm too. I'm telling you right now, that was, a, that was a much, much better lap. Great lap much, for much Jennifer lap. Joe Cobb. 31.53 for Jennifer Joe. And yesterday she had run a 31.573. So her fastest lap since she's been here in Kansas on the newly repaved Kansas Speedway. We've seen in the racetrack how good your car is turning, how much grip the tires have, all those things. And believe me, you know when you've done it long enough, you know when it's time to, 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 to throttle back a little bit. You say that experience. I mean, the, the key oh, yeah. word there is experience. You're going to know that when you pushed it too hard and you end up in the wall, yeah, you well, know that yeah. you went just a bit too far. And sometimes, sometimes <laughs> as a driver, you're the only one that knows. And if you go way too far, then the whole world knows because you're on the hook. But <laughs> you have to. That's why I'm not convinced. You know, a lot of these young kids, uh, like Jeremy Clements, a lot of these guys are going fast because they don't know any better. They don't know the limits that you know the, the cars had back in the day i mean these are different kind of cars different kind of engines better tires you know a lot of stuff going on and i think um, you know not always uh, experience is key when it comes to going fast great back did i know we didn't expect for trevor bain to come into this race 12th in the championship here's a team with high expectations for the day Penske Racing with Joey Logano behind the wheel of this 22. Joey, the most recent Nationwide Series race winner here at Charlotte. One for Joe Gibbs last October. Led the most laps at Talladega. Came within a skosh of winning. Brad Kozlowski won at Richmond aboard the 22. Yeah, certainly a driver Z that we'll watch today to uh, be up there in the mix to try to stop Kyle Busch's dominance and, and anyone else in that Joe Gibbs camp. Joey now all of 23 years old. Double there on the second lap, took a little bit of speed away. It's number 98 Ford Fusion for Yates Racing. Two starts in 09. Both produced top 15 finishes, including a third place start with a fifth place finish in Texas. He won a NASCAR Southwest Series race here in 2002. Nice, smooth, good-looking lap. Fourth, fourth fastest in practice. We'll see if he can bag that up. Looks like he's oh, right yeah. on top of it, but a top five. I like that lap, Hermie. That car never looked out of shape. And Menard is fourth with a 27.54. He's got a good combination of being fast and looking stable on the yep. racetrack. That is the third fastest first lap of the day. He wants more. He's going to get a little bit more, too, it looks like. Third for Paul Menard with a 27-39. When uh, you watch Sam Hornis Jr. go out, when Tony won at Martinsville last week, and, uh, you know, Tony started taking his jabs, and Carl wasn't having any of it. Carl's like, uh, I think it would be a mistake to focus on any one driver. <laughs> very political. Very, very, political. very. Not having any of it. Yeah, Tony was trying to get under his skin just yes, a little he bit. Was. Yeah, what, what did he say? He said, Carl Edwards better not sleep these last three races. <laughs> Good lap for Sam Hornish Jr. in this 12 car. He's going to run the remaining races here in 2011. He's seventh quickest at a 29-11.
and announced a full schedule for 2012 with Penske Great. Racing. So good news for Sam good getting back full time. Phil, I guess it's got to be tough for a guy who's, you know, been nothing but a full-time racer not to be in a race car every week. Yeah, it's getting very, very hard, but Sam's done a great job. Very competitive when he jumps in this nationwide car. Had his hands full coming off turn four right there, though. Saw him wiggle down in three and four. I'm not so sure that he didn't get too low through the middle of three and four and just clipped that apron, made it wiggle just a little bit. Home, home race for Willie Allen. Started 14th last week at Charlotte. It was his best start in seven races this season. 29 years old from, as Andy said, right here in Nashville, Tennessee. Follow the tracker as it relates to the 56 of Kevin LePage, currently slowest on that, uh, who's on the bubble of the go or go homers. Now 31, four, two, three is the lap that Willie's gonna have to beat here. It's uh, Kevin LePage's lap. Looks like he's pretty clean down the back stretch, but uh, he's going to have to pick it up just a little bit. He's, he's behind Kevin LePage. Okay, he's going the right direction now. Looks good for Willie Allen. Not so good for Kevin LePage. So Willie Allen's going to make the show. A lot of fans here in Nashville happy to see that. The Hometown racer getting in with a 31.23. Good for 31st on the chart. Six of his 16 nationwide series starts have come right here in the state of Tennessee, so we can add to that. This will be number seven. His career best finish, 15th on the concrete at Bristol in March. He'd love to get a good finish here because of all the things that have happened in, in Nashville and this being his hometown. Really lost his father recently as well. 29, but 31, 14. Car attack right now in the first lap. What in the world was that all about? He's 38th fastest. Clint got a win here in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series about five years ago, back in 2006. Just a handful of starts this year, but three top three finishes for Clint. Made his Nationwide Series debut here back in 2004. Good lap going right here, Larry. Fourth quickest on lap number one. He's tracking pole speed right now. If he could keep it going through three and four. Yeah, you see the little blue box. We're showing it keeps flicking back and forth. Two, three, one hundreds. Now he lost a little ground through oh. the middle of three and four. And that's going to escalate late exit turn four. He's going to end up fourth quickest. Phil, it looked like that car, to Larry's point, jumped sideways a little bit coming off four. And then you could see the number go up from that yep. in that blue box right when that happened. And welcome back. NASCAR Nationwide Series qualifying continuing here on Speed, your motorsports authority. It's Blake Cook out on the racetrack now, the number 52. Blake, one of the drivers that has to race for the Rookie of the Year honor this year. He had a pretty good lap in practice yesterday as well. He was 31-10. Um, he ran in practice, and he had a really good lap going. Lost a little bit coming off. Yeah, four. Way high. Yeah. Like, wait a minute, buddy. You don't need to be up there. Good lap coming, though. It's going to be a solid lap. Fourth quick on lap number one for Blake Cook. 31.589. Can he improve it on lap number two? And if you noticed right there, unlike a lot of guys, he almost like he lifted that a little bit to get back to throttle a little quicker. As some of them said, gave that little courtesy lift, you might say. But you see the tracker drop off just a little bit, but automatically jump right back up there. So uh, I don't think he's going to pick up on that, too, because his tires have lost some grip. But you can see, as a driver, he was trying to adjust to what he saw on left one. So good effort for Blake Cook. Last driver out is Elliott Sadler, 15 points behind Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Ran 28.90 this morning in that first very, very cool practice. He's right there at it, Larry. He's just sitting all over the He's top. He's got it. He's going to get it, Larry. He got a great run off turn four, and I think the man second the points is going to take the pole here How at about a 28.978. P1, you're good. P1. How about that? Hey, Ernie said you're good. Please don't take a chance on this second lap. Good job, Elliot. 28.97, P1. Experience in the trucks plus experience in the Sprint Cup. You've been wide open for a long time. 
and you're literally driving out of these corners straight at the wall. Got a green trace here. Yeah, he's three, about three tenths or a little more faster than he was in practice yesterday on that first lap. Back aboard this four car. He's a 2002 Cascar Western Series champion up in Canada. His father that. also won it in 2001. So father and son combination there, right? I've seen Darrell on and off uh, in the last uh, couple of years in a few different NASCAR series. We've seen him on the West Series before. And uh, here in the Nationwide Series, making his third start of this season. See what the numbers look like here. That'll be second quick so far. And it's it's kind of a funny thing, you know. I talk about drivers that have never run the Nationwide Series at this racetrack. There are 11 of them going to be in this race. Darrell is one of them. So you're in that kind of awkward spot of. You want to go fast. You want to go as fast as you can go, but you know there is no point yeah. taking a chance on bending the race car in qualifying because you're in the race. Yeah, and if you haven't been here before, of course, they're getting a break today. A lot of times they would be in the sun, this racetrack getting in very slick and, and trying to run, as Andy pointed out at the top of the show. They have their race set up in these cars. And, and, and it was a good run for Morgan Shepard in his qualifying. Glad to see him make it in. 25th quickest, and here's... Chris Lawson. He's made just one nationwide series start. That was at O'Reilly Raceway Park in Indianapolis last July. Spent some time in the truck race. And the truck series, I should say, Camping World Truck Series. Run some modified, some late models. Pretty clean through one and two. Seen a lot of guys struggling one and two. Mainly that entry to middle with the track being slick. We've got a little bit of cloud cover right now, so the track's a little cooler. Wow. Ooh. Cuts are close. Yes. They say you got to use up all the track if you're going to make a fast lap. Well, he did it. He just got himself in the race there with that first lap, 31st. Well done, Chris Lawson, 31.24. Well, Heartbreaking afternoon for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And that Reigning Series champion Brad Keselowski on the racetrack now in his discount tire number 22 as he is on the clock and second quick on lap number one, 30.811. Let's hear from the fastest guy in practice yesterday. He's with Bob Dillner. Rick, the problem is a lot of changes in the weather from one day to the next Elliott Sadler. So what's your biggest concern for qualifying? Well, just to see how much different the car is going to be. The track temperature now is around 25 degrees hotter than when we made our mock uh, run yesterday. But uh, the one main financial Chevrolet car was really good yesterday in race trim. And, of course, it was fast in a qualifying uh, run. So we think we've made the proper adjustments for the hotter, slicker track today. Man, we just got to go out there and put a lap together. Hey, Wallace deserves a lot of credit for putting in all the time he does away from the racetrack to get these sponsors and do these things to be able to run competitive. And he has had a great run at Richmond last week and it uh, looks like he's got a pretty good car game this week. Rick Sorensen on the racetrack now. Georgia native running for Turner Motorsports. Turner Motorsports really has had a great season already in 2011. Been to victory lane a few times. Reed Sorensen battling for a championship. Yeah they, uh, they I think they've really turned a lot of people's heads and it'll be interesting to see what they are able to produce next year for building their own cars if they do I mean, they do the same thing that Roush Fenway, RCR, Hendrick do. I mean, you know, they, they build on cars. They do so much stuff in-house. They do an excellent job with it, and they're able to keep up with those big teams. So I've uh, been very impressed with uh, this organization. Reed Sorensen's first lap, six quick, 31.035. And amazingly enough, I don't think we're giving Brian Scott enough credit for the lap that he turned at 30.552, the fastest lap that was run. A half tracks, he's left. Right. Five minutes into this opening session, and exactly one car has been out and made a qualifying run, Regan.
overcast. There were a lot of clouds. Mm -hmm. The sun was behind the clouds. Now, obviously, you can see full sun. I wonder if maybe they're losing a little bit of grip because of that sunshine. Well, I, you know, I said earlier I thought it was going to play out, you know, for Trevor Bain going out late because of that uh, cloud cover and the track cooling down. But when this sun pops back out like it is, uh, that's not going to be good. But, hey, man, look up right now, at least from my, our vantage point, it looks like there's possibility of another cloud coming in and maybe giving uh, Trevor Bain and his guys going out last uh, a little bit of help here. It didn't hurt Joey Logano having some sunshine out on the racetrack there as he goes to the top of the chart. Two so, one thousandths of a just second. A little bit just, of a, just a just little, little bit. Little bit. <laughs> With all Joey Logano You're has going on in the Cup Series right now on which track. Is good for P1. And off and, the track. Uh, eight, nine. <laughs> you know, I don't think they did. Honestly, I don't think they did. <laughs> well, Times have good. changed a little, have A little bit. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get him in the mood. Uh, that's right, exactly. Here's Joey Logano in the Joe Gibbs Racing 18. This will be a test for Elliott Sadler's lap. Tracking ahead of it so far, that line in the green. Yeah, he had a good corner right there. Yeah, yeah he's talking solid. He's talking about trying to carry the throttle. He did right there. And he's going to carry. This speed will carry all the way down that back straightaway, too. You can see almost three tenths quicker than Elliott's lap. I'll tell you, this Joe Gibbs bunch hasn't won all those races here in a row by accident. Yeah, got exactly. Great yeah. car. His teammate on the cup side won the pole, Denny Hamlin, for the Sprint Cup race here tomorrow. Wow, what a lap this is. Goodness. There you go. That's six tenths faster than any lap that's been run when it comes time for qualifying. And here's a young man that's on the racetrack that hopes he can repeat, make the sweep, you might say, of the season. Yeah, I, I had mentioned earlier about the beneficiary of Carl Edwards running out of fuel was the driver of this number 31. He was up there all day long, but you're right, he did take advantage of him. And, and we don't want to forget that, that, that in June when we were here, the spring race, qualifying was rained out, so he lined up by points. Justin Algar in his first lap, fifth quick, 31.086. Algar has two career wins. Of course, the most recent coming earlier this year in June at this very racetrack. Across the stripe for lap number two, and he slows down just a bit, 31.213. Let's go down to Wendy. She's got the fastest. It uh, damaged a couple of those cars, and then it became a shootout between Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin in the final laps. Denny was driving the 20 car last year. This year, it's Joey Logano in the 20 car, already a two-time winner this season in the Nationwide Series, including that ever-so-close finish at Talladega oh, last Saturday. That's right. He was up there. He dusted the top of the track. If he did, he he did was, hit it. He was he, so close. That's right. He was asking for one? Yeah, he was. He wanted one. Well, I don't know if he wanted one. <laughs> <laughs> he was driving like he did. Yeah. Good lap, though. Yeah. So big is picking up speed down that back straight. Well, look at that. Into turn three, our tracker. That's really quick. The look way at he that. exited turn two. Still climbing. Running right on that. Wow, that is a fast lap right now. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Fastest lap of the weekend. Two and a half tenths faster than Casey Kane. And I thought Kane had a faster one. The more cars we've got coming out, this track is getting cooler. It's getting faster. You got more talent coming out too. Seems like if you just if you can push that car that last six inches, there's about another half a second up there. Look how high he's running that car. Right in the middle of turn three, there's so much grip right there. If you can get on the throttle early, right there, like Pastrana was trying to do, and have that baby stick on next to turn four, you're going to get a fast lap. Well, Vince, his teammate Denny Hamlin's going to have a second, but they add up Michael Annette on uh, on pole qualifying speed. And he is coming through a little wide on that. That is not the race line preferred coming through that corner as he comes across the stripe. It is good enough, though, to, to put him in the top spot. One minute, 26.7 seconds. That's 93.7 miles an hour. But the reason that exit works in qualifying is because the late entry gives you a straight exit. And you don't have a car trying to fill that hole. To your point, Marty, in the race, you got to be a little more defensive on your corner entries. You open it up like that. And you're going to have somebody in your right rear quarterback. We've seen a lot of guys getting close to dropping those two wheels off there, coming out of keyhole. In fact, you see the dust off to the right. Obviously, somebody coming through turn one had a bit of an off-course excursion. Let's check on that. 
Don't see anything. Yet. Nobody, no serious harm, we're told. Pretty busy for these drivers, and you can see Michael locks up the left front tire. Oh, it gets way wide. And that's an example of the price you pay for trying too hard through the S's. It's the slowest portion of the course, and all you can do is mess it up. Let's watch the 24s. He's carrying some grass here, Marty. That he has a pole here set in this race in 2004. Looks to me like he's got a boo-boo on the right side, too. <laughs> Looks like he got through one and two as bad as fast or faster than anybody else has today so far, even with that boo-boo on the right side. When you get that boo-boo, Jeff, you know what your limit is. I, he always knows where his limit is. I can promise you that, but uh, look like they've got still a little bit of work to do on that number 32 car. And uh, Well, here we go again. Your Come turn, Hermie. Well, I'm going to see if he gets it again because lap two for him, knowing the way this guy puts the hammer down, this lap here may even be faster than lap one. Right now it's three one hundredths quicker than the first lap. And he is almost nine tenths of a second quicker than Ryan Newman's track record that has held up since 2001. Fell off right at the end. But still, Kyle Busch is the third driver to break the track record. Extremely impressive. And he is the final one on the track that can take the spot away. And that game stop need for speed most wanted Toyota. I'm sorry, he's eight, eight wins. Eight, eight wins. wins. Going for nine. Most recent win a week ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, two in a row. Yeah. The last, last two weeks. Logano goes second quick. 29.689. So he has a little work to do if he wants to steal the pole away from Austin Dillon. Watch that. Right track. Look at the he's tracker. All over top of him. Almost a dead heat right now between Logano and Austin Dillon's lap. 188 miles an hour as he drives off into turn number three. But look how uh, little speed he loses. He's losing through the a little corner. speed. Can he make it up? Down to the apron. He goes across the stripe. Does he get it? He does. Logano steals it away from Austin Dillon. 29. Uh, it does tend to show itself that uh, those, those teams uh, are able to get their hands on. Yeah, Turner Group doing a really good job over there. They got they got great equipment, uh, engines from Hendrick. So, you know, they do have a little bit of connection to the cup side, but basically on the car side, they're on their own. Yeah, as we watch Morgan go here, some, back to something that James Busher said early in that interview was about his race car making adjustments as it was tight off the corner. But if they adjusted that out, then he got loose on the entry. So in that situation, I think when I got in that type of situation as a driver, I always look, okay, I need that security getting into the corner because you have to carry that speed. Then I might have to adjust my line a little bit to help that. If I can stay wider getting in the corner since we've got it comfortable doing that, then maybe I can get a, a straighter shot coming on the exit of the corner, and that will take care of that problem. Morgan's car was doing a little dance there entering the corner. Making his first Darlington start. He's in the Fastenal Dodge, and it's his seventh start of 2008. I tell you something else, Mike. To, to a guy like Mark Martin, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, somebody has an opportunity today to get in this record book for the Nationwide Series. This racetrack is probably not going to get any faster over the next couple of years, so whoever sets on the pole for this race tonight will probably be in the record book here at this racetrack for quite some time. Well, if you remember Ward Burton, he's held the track record since uh, 1996, Mike, and it's, you know, it's in jeopardy being broken later on this evening when the, when the uh, uh, sprint cup cars go back on the racetrack, but like you say, that's a very good point. You have an opportunity to put your name in the record book probably for uh, for quite a while to come. Bobby Hamilton's stay as the track record holder may be short. Brian Clawson. You might get another chance, Mike. You might get another chance. Tune it up. Jeff's turn this time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about, Mike. I just think it's so impressive when you hear guys. All right, Jeff. Really. We have a 19th, so good job by him. And Ryan Sieg had dropped out, but but he's now worked his way back into the top 24 and is on track as we speak. In fact, a, a lot of activity right now as we close on five minutes to go in the opening round. Yeah, and all this activity, all this moving up has pretty much happened behind Elliott Sadler. He's only slipped to 18th, so feel good about that car transferring, but uh, probably not. They're not 100% confident down there. They're not going to have to crank up and go again. First game. And they're impeccable. Lost. Yeah, so <laughs> that makes this game pretty important. Coming up. <laughs> yeah, they need to win before they go back to Boston for sure. They don't want to have to win all three games back there. Here's Jeremy Clements on the track in the 04, and we're comparing yep. him now to Morgan Shepard. So yep. uh, it's not to the pole sitter. 
pretty solid practice for Jeremy oh, man, yesterday as well. Shit right there, though. Wow, he's got to regroup here. Yeah. He does. He has to regroup. The worst possible okay, place. And really, that's the worst. You like you said that that's going to kill this lap too because his speed at that point. You can see now it's in the red. That's because he carried so little momentum from turn four. It's going to be hard for him to get in this field now. Still has a chance. Making yep. a good effort here now. Whoa. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Well, he is up on that wheel. Grazed the wall there with that right rear. And again, that's the tracker is in comparison to Morgan Shepard, the fastest of the go or go homers at this point. And had coming off a great run last week at Charlotte where he finished 16th, best finish of the season. I'll tell you, that's a good recovery. Now, he didn't lock himself in, but I do believe this will be quick enough to get in the field. It's 25th quick, that second lap, 31.233. And that's Trevor Bain. Talk to him, one of the Roush Fenway drivers. The question was, can you hold it all the way down, all the way around the racetrack? And here's a guy who has to get in on time, so maybe the first lap a little ginger and then go after it on lap two. Drive it smart the first lap, and then if you want to let it all hang out, well then go for it. it, it you get these young kids together and they're like daring each other to run it wide open. Like Jeff said, <laughs> this guy it, it cannot afford to make a mistake in qualifying to to get him. So he's got in solid P6 on lap one. We'll see if he decides to get a little more brave on lap two, being that he's got a safe lap in. We'll see. So Trevor Bain locks himself into the race. That knocks Brian Kozlowski out of this race. We see Bain hovering right around the seventh position. Six seventh, so it doesn't look like too much of a pickup if he gets any pickup on lap number two. For Trevor Bain slows down just a little bit. I think Elliot Sadler you know, kind of pointed it out. I, I don't. I really believe now we're going to wind up having to see guys run faster on that first. It's a guy with a ton of momentum, Joey Logano. He won the Cup race a week ago in Pocono. He's been on fire here in the Nationwide Series. Where is your confidence level right now coming into today? Pretty high, which is which is a good thing. I got a, another really good Dollar General Toyota for today that's uh, capable of winning. So uh, we'll see what happens here for qualifying. We got the big ears on the back, and uh, you see other cars with the, with the smaller, uh, you know, blade there. So um, I think that'll affect the qualifying effort a little bit. But uh, I think we're up towards the front, and um, you know, you never know. This is going to be a crazy race. It's going to be. Uh, I think it's going to be awesome as a fan to watch this thing. I think as a driver, it's going to be a ton of fun too. Um, I don't think you'll see anyone pull away because I think the draft's going to just keep everyone so close. So. Um, I'm interested to see what the first laps are going to be. It's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're all interested to see what those first laps are going to be. What do you say, Alan? Yeah, and, and while we watch James Busher here with a lap that looks like it's going to put him to the top of the board for the moment, let's talk about that. Race number seven of the season for the Nationwide Series. We're live on ESPN2. Coverage starting at 7 Eastern time. Eric Darnell on the racetrack in Curtis Key's number 40 machine and has just gone to the top of the board. 2257 for Darnell. It's just a little bit quicker than he actually ran in practice earlier today. Picked it up. Yeah. Out of tenth on that second lap. That's what most of the time what you would see here at Ridge. Anytime there's a new paving job done on a racetrack, because they want a tire that has a lot of grip, but is they've also got to be a tire that doesn't hold a lot of heat, Jeff and have tires blistering and blowing and those kind of things. So Goodyear's got to err on the side of caution the first time at a racetrack. Next time we come, they can probably bring something a little bit more, a little bit softer, maybe more racy that we talk about. Yeah, the thing is right now we take a look here at Joey Logano in this 18 car. He just now went to the top of the leaderboard. But to add to that, Rick, when you, when you repave a racetrack, we now have the technology that this is not your normal asphalt you see in your normal driveway or out on the highway. They can add polymers. He gets a little loose. I'm talking about Joe Logano right now on that 18, uh, trying to go a little quicker here on his second lap. But they can add polymers to try to handle the heat we're going to see here at Phoenix so that this paving job, you know, stays down, stays smooth for a longer period of time. And when they do that, again, big challenge for good. The next group. Here is our lap tracker, and you can see that Kyle Kelly is uh, looking like he's going to take over pole position as he comes across the stripe, and he does. One minute, 27.7 seconds. Yeah, that was his second lap. Actually, his first lap on 128.10 was fast enough for the uh, number one spot. Now, you see in the upper right where Kelly is flashing green. That means he is even going quicker than his current pole speed. So anybody flashing green is quicker than the current pole. 
traditionally the first lap on stickers is fastest on ovals on a road course when you consider that the drivers are still familiarizing themselves with this track and the fact that they hadn't been on the track since five or six o'clock on friday the second or third lap should be more comfortable and and probably test themselves a little more that first lap is going to be a surrender lap now you notice he takes it a little wider through that section of the s's the s's are an opportunity to fail there's not a lot of speed to be gained but if you overstep your boundaries you, you pay the price and, 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 and again turn nine up over the hill very unsettling Back down to second gear. Carrying that left front wheel. You're going to see that on almost every car through that section. Into the carousel. There's that bump that you were talking about. You want to see drivers come up off that corner straight. When they hit that bump, Marty, they want both rear tires spinning. Not and just a left or right. He goes even quicker. 127.4. Let's check his two seasons. He has one win in 47 starts. That was at Pocono last August. Look at the new colors for the 22. That's Joey Logano at the wheel. This is the car that was on the pole since the record last year at 29067. And he is tracking very strong here on his first lap. It's going to be close. He may take over the top spot and does on the first lap. Now, how low can he go? See Jeremy Mullins doing such a great job with this car with different drivers, three different drivers going to victory lane. That's a great looking paint scheme. Saw that yesterday. Won't be hard to pick this car out today. Yeah, I'm from what, this lap looks like he looks like we can look for him at the front. Wow. Yeah, got a little wide right there. And he's gonna speed. He's gonna take it down quite a bit. How about 29.10 seconds? The old record set by Brad Kay in that car last year, 29.06. Him into the number four position. Eric McClure in the Reynolds number 14. As you can see, he's got four career starts. 29th in owner points, only seven ahead of 31st place. So obviously they need to keep performing. Yeah, and that is in this nationwide series, it is the top 30 that get locked in. So Eric looking for to get a good starting spot here and then to have a good race to accumulate some points and get a little bit of a cushion. Great Cogswell looking on as he's got a decent run going here. He's about four tenths of a second off of Joe Nemechek's time. We've had a total of seven cars already on the track. And here comes Eric and Eric slots into the number two spot. 31.88 seconds. It looks like he's going to take the second lap. Yeah, he picked up quite a bit. That's a little over seven tenths of a second faster than what he was yesterday. We do have some cloud cover, despite the fact the temperature's hovering right around 90 degrees. And it is very oppressive with the humidity. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit more than cloud cover here shortly. It looks like it's getting pretty dark over there. We could see a few raindrops. Now, shh, shh, well, we could. Just, I'm just keeping it real, Marty. Hush thy mouth. <laughs> 31 seconds, uh, 31.9 on the second lap. He'll stick with, obviously, lap number one. At th oh. And uh, it's a little hotter out now than it was when we practiced. So, um, thankfully, I got a little cup practice this morning. I think it's going to give us a little better read on where the track went and all that. So, we'll have to see what happens. I got a really cool car with Hitman on it this week. Uh, really cool fire suit. That's even better. I got a really cool fire suit. I just up for the occasion today. So, I got a note from Russell Winrich said Kyle started 37th at Dover and led 271 laps. Wrong this, Kyle. You know. I know. I, you can't go off these stat guys. I know. Sometimes they give you erroneous they give stuff. Erroneous stats. No. I don't know what their problem is. They're just making up stuff over there. I mean, uh, who he did? didn't even know when the Titanic sunk. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> you did within 19 minutes. Within 19 minutes, Kyle Petty was all over it. We, We've we, got we Joey Logano. On the racetrack for his qualifying session, his first lap, 54.569, is 20th quick in the 20 car. <laughs> We've talked about what an ominous day that I, 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 mean, is that word yeah, I like it. This Keep day, because it. Abraham Lincoln died on April 15th. The Titanic sank on April 15th. You have to pay taxes on, on April, April 15th. 15th. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's all sorts of things. There's all sorts of things that aren't good that are related with this date. Yeah, and you got to worry about spiders and snakes <laughs> on April 15th. <laughs> Joy Logano looking good going through one and two and then coming out of three and four, but has fallen out of the top five. But he stayed on the racetrack pretty much the whole way around. Yeah. And that, we've seen, has been the fastest way around this racetrack, and these guys are searching for something different. I, I still can't get over the fact they get down there and run around the yeah. bottom like they're doing. But, you know, in, in all honesty, and we've not seen this before, he's fifth on the track where Danica Patrick is making her qualifying run. A pretty good time. A lot of changes have happened, obviously, at that race team. Got a half second to gain still. Like if it were for Scott, I mean, she's doing fantastic out there. Dropped off a little in four. Coming across the line, and it will be a 30.02 second, a best time on.